going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tuck want to take you with us for an epic backyard garden harvest. Let's go! Let's start things off by harvesting some of these incredible mushroom basket tomatoes. Look at this set. These things are just monsters. Let me grab this person right here. Look at the color. It's got this like watermelon pink blush with the little sparkles on it. It, it. Not only does it look amazing, this tomato has a great flavor, not a lot of seeds on it, and uh, it's just so amazing. Look at this set. <laughs> this is why we grow our own food at home. You can't get this stuff from the store. Not this good, not organic like this. Oh, not picked as fresh as this stuff too. Look at these, one plant, what an incredible start to a harvest. Gotta love the mushroom basket tomato, so good. We've got so many things to grab though, let's keep moving. Come on over here, I wanna show you something. Look at the ground right here. Look how much the watermelon has just taken this section over and the watermelon plant comes from the raised bed right there, it's in the corner. So I planted this in the corner of the raised bed and allowed it to just grow out into a section where I'm not growing anything else. So we really get the most out of the space. Look how big this uh, watermelon is in the back right here. This is the Alibaba watermelon. Beautiful color to it, and it's supposed to be an incredible tasting watermelon also. Just peek up a little bit, and look how stacked this apple plant is. I mean, this apple tree is just so amazing. This is the Liberty Apple. It's got incredible disease resistance. If you want to grow an apple, you need to make sure you get the Liberty Apple in. You'll notice in some spots the critters are starting to snack on it a little bit. I think this apple still has a good amount of time, but I'm gonna taste one that they started snacking on a little. There's one right here that's got a bite. So let's just shine it, take a look at it, and taste how close it is to actually being ripe. I'm gonna harvest some more apples too, like the Honeycrisp right behind me. These ones are super close too, and we're probably gonna grab one of those as well because the critters have started to take them. So let's shine this baby up. You can see before the shine, and then just a little classic natural shine. <laughs> look at the difference. It looks like I waxed this thing. So amazing. Look at the boss right to the right of me before we take a bite. He found some of the cucumbers at the bottom. Looks like he's gonna start snacking on this cucumber when it's still on the vine. <laughs> he loves this variety and so do we. This is the Suyo Long Cucumber. So just take a peek up real quick before we taste this apple. Look how many cucumbers are on this vine. There's so many on it that it starts to pull the vine down. So let's get, get them. We got one here, two here, and then three. Right in this one little location. And then Tuck's snacking on the fourth one right there. Love this cucumber so much, and it lacks the uh, cucurbit tassin, so it's not gonna be bitter, and it's not gonna attract a lot of the cucumber beetles, so an incredible plant. Let's actually taste this apple like I said I was going to, though, now that we've got it all shined up nicely. And just imagine, in a few weeks from now, this whole plant is just gonna be, this whole tree is gonna be loaded with fresh apples, looking just like this. Let's get a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Good flavor, still a bit tart, and still a bit green on the inside. So I know it needs a little bit more time, but we're getting so close. That's why some of the critters have started to snack on them already. Let's keep moving though, we got a lot of stuff to grab. We're just getting started. Peer to my right a little bit. I wanna show you this variety, the Sweet Treats Tomato. Look how beautiful these sets are late into the season. Look at the color of that. It's got like this matte finish to it these tomatoes. It's not like a super bright one, it's got like a more of a matte finish, but the taste is incredible because the taste of these tomatoes, it doesn't taste like a typical cherry tomato. This thing tastes more like, like a beef steak, like a larger tomato would. So it's got this unique kind of flavor to it for the size of the tomato that it is. But man, does it look nice and does it produce incredibly well late into the season. Let's get a taste of them. Very mild, not insanely sweet, very low acidity, but it's got a real good tomato flavor to it. Delicious. Sometimes the Sun Gold Cherries can be so sweet that they don't, they don't even taste like tomatoes. But this one has a really nice tomato flavor. And then next to it, we've got the yellow, or the white currant tomato right here. This is the white currant tomato. Probably should be called the yellow currant, but these ones are good too. They're said to be super, super sweet, but I'll tell you what, compared to like the Sun Gold or the Super Sweet 100, they're really not that sweet. They've got a good flavor and they grow really well late into the season, but I'll tell you and let you know. Yeah. Pretty mild sweetness. 
pretty just mild tomato in general. I probably won't do this one again, even though it performed well, just doesn't have the flavor to really take it to the next level in my opinion. You will not <laughs> believe how many grapes we have ready to harvest. I'm gonna have to grab some of the grapes today, some of the Niagara grapes. I'm talking like we're just gonna get some incredible sets of grapes because they're ready to be harvested today. So before I do that, I planted some cucumbers at the corner of the bed, just like I did for the uh, watermelons, but I missed a few of them down here. You'll notice when I had the insect netting on the bed. So let's harvest these cucumbers right here. Then I think I missed one further down here underneath my, uh, underneath my pumpkins. So we're gonna grab this one as well. Put that in the basket. And then we've got some lettuce that are starting to set up. So let's actually grab one of these heads of lettuce just so we can snack on one at this time of the year. This is the concept bot bean lettuce. Nice little head, nice crunch to it, good color. Just an excellent lettuce, does really well for me. Over here, before we get to the, before we get to the grapes, we've got more stuff in this bed. You can see I've transitioned to fall. We've got a lot of our brassicas in here doing real nice, different kind of cabbages. Here's an Ajvarsky pepper. Look at the size of this thing, absolute monster. Beautiful pepper, really nice stuff. Tuck will probably snack on this one if I drop it. But let's get another one back here. This one's getting close to ripe, but we'll grab it. And then we'll come back just because we got a plane flying over the top of us right now. <laughs> oh, looks like the boss is gonna go for the pepper. We'll let him snack on that sweet pepper. Have the Ajvarsky. This guy loves his snacks fresh from the garden. If you love to see Tuck in the video, spam the hearts down low and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The sweetest, healthiest guard dog that's ever been out there. This guy's always working hard, so spam those hearts for him. Let's keep moving though, we've got more stuff. I'm gonna grab another one of these Advarskis in the back. Pepper doing real nicely. And then I think I got a little uh, Criolla de Cocina back here, a real small one. We've got more, more of the Criolla de Cocina in other spots though. So we're gonna grab some more of those as the video progresses. Let's grab this stuff here, and let's go move over to the grapes. Actually, actually, we got some, uh, <laughs> Jimmy Nardello right here. Let's grab one of these. Look at the little Jimmies. Love these peppers. And let's go move over to the grapes real quick. Follow me. Look how beautiful the candy cane zinnias are. I mean, that is just striking. It's hard to walk by these without just taking a look at them. They're so beautiful. So here's the grapes over here. But before I show those, I just wanna grab a zucchini from my zucchini plant in a bucket right here. You can see we've got some fresh zucchini growing out the front. This one's nice, so if you don't have a lot of space and you only have just a patio, you can still grow some of your own fresh snacks right in buckets. Get some excellent zucchini, peppers, eggplants, anything you can think of, you can grow it in a pot. So let's check out these, pep these uh, grapes and grab a harvest from them. So as you look up here, you'll notice these are the Catawba grapes. These are a little later ripening than Niagara, but they are starting to turn, they're starting to change color on some of them, which is super exciting. This is the time of year that we can just not wait for. Look at this over here. <laughs> Look at the pink blush on the, uh, on the Catawbas over here. When these are ripe, they are so sweet. Let me just taste one of the ones that are getting close to ripe right here, one of these red ones. Mm. Mm. So sweet, so delicious. They still have the seed in them, but man, are they just uh, so good. I can't wait for these to be ripe. We need to grab some of the Niagara grapes because these are ripe and, uh, and the birds are starting to get to some of them. So before the birds take a lot of them, I wanna grab a nice harvest today, make some jelly or jam or something and get the most out of them because this is why we grow food in our backyard. I mean, this is what it's all about. Fresh harvests right here from the backyard. I'm just gonna cut this whole section right here out. Bang, look at that. <laughs> look at that. And let's get one more just to be a little bit greedy. Bang, look at that. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Take a peek around at how many we still have left. This is only scratching the surface of the grape harvest. This is going to be by far our biggest grape harvest ever. And uh, it's just so fantastic. Growing food for years, you get a lot better at what you're doing so you can get more out of it. So it just, uh, I don't know. I, I, this is like my favorite time of the year. We put so much work in through the spring and the winter and everything so we can get these harvests. So this is what it's about. Look at the fig tree. It's growing beautifully this year. Got some large figs on it. Got some figs down here that are just starting to get around being ripening. They're starting to swell up a little bit. So we can't wait to have some fresh figs from this guy later in the season. 
But let's move over to some pears that are ripe, ready to be eaten. My favorite pear of all time. This is the Chijuro pear. It's an Asian pear and it's called uh, the butterscotch pear because the flavor tastes like butterscotch when it's ripe. And they're amazing. See a couple have dropped to the ground because they're starting to get ripe. That's the color you want when they're ripe. I think there's one or two I can grab from the tree. But first, just take a look at the tree. So look how heavy it's getting, how much it's being weighed down. I went through and pruned out a lot of these uh, pears, probably like 30% just recently because the tree was just getting too heavy. So you can't get too greedy. We wanted to make sure we got some pears instead of letting the branch crack because we've done that in the past. So this one looks like a pretty nice one right here. Let's grab this decent size on it, decent color. You can see it's still got a little greening in it, but as it's starting to turn that, that, that dark brown, uh, yellowish color, that's when they, start to be, when they start to ripen and when they get that incredible butterscotch flavor. So another one of those things that we've just been waiting all year for. But the amazing thing is we were eating strawberries and, and blueberries and all different fruits waiting for this one. So it's like an incredible way to extend your harvest when you have a diverse number of fruits. Let's bite into it. Mmm. So sweet, so juicy, so fresh. Uh, I mean, I can eat this whole thing right now, but we gotta keep moving. We got more stuff to grab. Let's, uh, let's maybe move over into the other garden. We're in the other food forest now. Let's keep grabbing stuff. I gotta show you something that I've never harvested before. Right here is the Zucchino Rampicante. Look at this thing, it's just insane looking. It looks like it's from another planet or something, but it's supposed to be an amazing uh, favorite old Italian heirloom variety. So this could be in just like a, squash wood where you eat it like a zucchini. So I cannot wait to try it. It's supposed to have an amazing mild and sweet flavor, but <laughs> does it just, it looks hilarious. I've got another one growing that I grew on the ground so it doesn't have as much of elongated shape. I think the fact that it was hanging made it this long, but it's supposed to have great flavor and it's also supposed to store well. So I can't wait to actually try this one, but it looks like a real winner so far in my opinion. Look down below you. I mentioned how you could grow stuff in pots. Look how many Criolla de Cocina peppers are on just this one plant. It just blows me away. I'm gonna harvest a bunch of them. We'll just grab one or two right now. I don't wanna spend too much time just harvesting. It gets a little monotonous. Check out this right here. This is the Jimmy Nardello. Absolutely loaded as well. Uh, incredible production on this pepper. We'll grab another one here. Look at Tuck, he's trying to steal them right as we grab them. Buddy, you already had your pepper snack, man. I think that's enough for now. So we gotta grab a lot of these peppers, but I'm just blown away at how well they're doing. Again, the little boss, look at him. I mean, he just can't stay away. Once he sees the color of the red, he smells it. He can't help but steal it. We got a little garden thief. All right, let's keep going. I've talked about it before, but these, these squash, it's the best, probably the best variety of squash that I've ever grown. This is the white scallop squash. And one of the reasons it's so amazing is because it has an incredible flavor like a zucchini would. It's very sweet and then it doesn't have a bad aftertaste at all, but it also stores incredibly well. It almost stores like a winter squash would, but it, it tastes like a summer squash and it grows like one too. So it's a, the production is amazing. I've got two right here. You can see another one back there. Then there's, there's another one here, a big one that it looks like I missed. Let's grab that one. I'd say there's probably about 10 or 12 just on these one, this one plant ready to harvest. So, I mean, more than you could ever eat. If you wanted to just grow some squash to eat for yourself, I bet one plant would be enough for the whole entire year. And we're, and we're later in the season. We've been getting harvest from the squash for months now. So like the, the length of production is incredible too. And it will continue to produce up until the first frost. Even the, even my, past favorite variety, the Castata Romanesco. This one isn't even doing as well. You can see it's starting to get some powdery mildew issues as we're getting later into the year. But the white scallop squash, that thing just keeps pumping out incredible amounts of squash. Really great plant, but let's keep going. We've got a lot of beans fresh, ready to harvest. We know the boss loves his beans. So we got my favorite variety here, the dragon tongue bean. Always grow on that one because not only does it look incredible, it tastes incredible. It's just one of those plants where like, sometimes you grow things and they look really good, but they don't taste that good. So, but sometimes you get some varieties where like beauty and flavor and excellent growth, growth like habits and characteristics all coincide and you get an incredible plant. And this is one of them, the dragon tongue bean. Tuck, tuck want a piece boy? So Dragon Tongue, such a good, delicious bean. One of Tuck's favorites as well. 
Just has a nice pop to it, nice juiciness, and overall a great one. We've got some purple beans up here too. Look how, look how, come over here. Look how incredibly productive this variety is. Really nice stuff. These ones have more of like a classic bean flavor and a little bit maybe more sweetness in the front end. Mm. Really good stuff. Different flavor, but still that same classic bean flavor. Amazing. Look at the other side of this bed. We've started to get our next round of brassicas in as well. Look at the color of the leaves. Look at that. That's what you really want to see. Look at the color of it. Look at the characteristics and the texture. That's a healthy plant right there. Over here, let's check out some of these lemon boys. Maybe you come around the back here. <laughs> We've got some fresh lemon boy tomatoes that need to be harvested. This is one of my best late season producers. Really nice stuff, especially when it comes to beef steaks. This one, it got squeezed a little bit between the steak, but still really nice stuff. Grab this other lemon boy here and another one in the back. And then just look up this plant. Look how healthy it is and look how many more tomatoes we're gonna get late in the season. This is one of my favorite late season producers, the lemon boy. And then take a, take a uh, little look to our right here. Look at all the tomatoes on these plants. The, I mean, the German lunchbox looking really nice. Look at the, the, the uh, I think this one's the brown pear loaded with fruit. And uh, one I really like out of all of these 10 that I'm gonna grow again next year is the Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry. This one right here. Really nice flavor, really nice size, overall incredible tomato. This will probably become a staple in the garden. A little splitting like you can see there, but then some of the, some of the fruits are just, I mean, beautiful. Look at that color. Really nice, almost like a mini version of the Lemon Boy. But great disease resistance, great late season producer. Exactly what we want at this time of the year. I gotta grab some grapes though because we've got some red grapes that need to be harvested. I showed you some of the greens, the Niagara. Now I want to show you some of the Reliance. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't even believe how many grapes we would have if the, if the birds weren't so dang greedy this year. Here's some evidence, look down here. Look at these sets where the birds have just essentially taken all of our grapes which is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. They still saved us some, like right here. Look at this set. <laughs> Beautiful grapes. This set right here. Look at this. So we, we kind of got to dance around the insect netting a little bit, but man, does it make it worth it. Look at that. Peak ripeness, beautiful color. Let me try one of these right here. Oh, man. <sighs> Nothing like fresh grapes at home. I, I bet a lot of you have never had a fresh grape in. It's just incredible. Mm. Mm. No seeds, so sweet, incredible. Oh, I mean, there's not a lot of adjective to describe it, but man, is it absolutely delicious. We got more stuff we need to grab though. Like some of these peppers over here are heavy producers. Tuck always stays away from the grapes. He can't eat them, so we keep them away from them. But I want you to come back over here a little more and take a look at the at the tomatoes, the tomato trellis area. I wanna show you something real quick. So one thing that's really cool about the way we grow the tomatoes is we have these, um, these little tomato wheel things up top here. And once the tomatoes get too tall, what I do is I release this and it drops the tomatoes down. This is known as lowering and leaning the tomatoes. So track down and look at all the fruit, how it's all at reachable height right here. And then start to scroll down more. The reason it's at reachable height is because, look, we've lowered this tomato and leaned and bent it. Because it's a vine, it has no problem doing this. So now all this food and this harvest is right where we want it. So we've done that with all the tomatoes. We've dropped them all down. So it's like, even though it looks like it's only like a five or six foot tomato, it's like a 10 foot tomato. So uh, it just continues the production. This is how we love grown up tomatoes. This is why growing up a trellis is so productive and so good. Not only does it increase the airflow, let you get a bigger harvest, but it also makes it incredibly more convenient to get that harvest. Now, I need to add some peppers. We've got some beautiful peppers over here. This is the Purple Beauty loaded. One mistake I did with this one is I should have uh, staked it up better, but look at some of the size of these incredible bell peppers back here. Look at this, look at this. Wow, that's what you love to see. Another one back here. This is not my first year growing this pepper. It does so well. We're gonna stack this here. I definitely need to get bigger bowls. I know a lot of you guys say that, but I don't wanna just be running, carrying a 20 pound bowl around the garden. So I use a bunch of different bowls. Look at this one. Another nice pepper. Then let's take a step behind us where we got the white eggplants, Japanese whites. Look at this. Really cool stuff. These little eggplants, good flavor on them too. Another one down here. 
productive plants. As we head later into the season, now is when we get a lot of our eggplants and peppers. So there's always another plant in full production, no matter what time of year it is, when you plant a diverse garden. That's today's video, girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Talk love making videos at this time of the year because it's like we put a lot of the work in from the summer and stuff. So now we're just reaping a lot of those benefits. And now we've also got a lot of the fall stuff in. And now we're just waiting for the harvest from those. So it's like we're still getting harvest from the summer stuff and we're also waiting for those fall harvests. So it's just a fun time of year to just be kind of hanging out, guiding the plants along and just grabbing all those harvests. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to grab some merch down low at jamesprigioni.com if you want to be part of Team Grow. Also, if you want to be part of Team Grow, uh, join the channel memberships so you can be a part, so you can be like a, you know, so you can be, have your hand in this community just like everyone else does. That's part of it and it's like a, uh, it's just a great place to be, I think. I want to thank our new channel member, Sack of Juia. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for uh, you know contributing to everything we have going on back here. And me and Tuck also loved your name. We thought it was clever and really funny how it's like a you know a play on words of the Sack of Juia, but it's hilarious. We thought it was really good stuff. So we want to just mention, hit that channel membership button if you want to be part, if you want to join the team, if you want this guy to be your boss. Always hanging out in the garden, showing up just what he should. He's dedicated. He's, this is the reason he's the leader of the channel. There's a reason he's the boss. There's a reason he's the king. So spam hearts for this guy. Join Team Grow. And me and Tuck will be back at you again with another one real soon. We out.